Forty years ago, the first athletic scholarship for a woman in the history of Charger Athletics was awarded to Gina Paolillo. To call it an historic event is an understatement. On June 23, 1972, Congress passed a legislation known as Title IX, which prohibits discrimination due to gender for federally funded institutions. At a time when most universities barely made a notice of women's sports, New Haven embarked on a journey that allowed women an opportunity to compete at the collegiate level. You know, the university was primarily an engineering college and a business school with some criminal justice. And those weren't professions that women were starting to embrace in, in the early 1970s yet. We so said we needed to do things to attract more women students to the university. And certainly uh, with Title IX in 1972 and then the interpretations in 74, we decided that we needed to hire someone full time and uh, develop some uh, women's sports. Debbie Chin said to me before taking the job, she said, well, how far do you want this program to go, women's sports? And, and I answered uh, with full support of the administration, take it as far as you can take it. You know, the early start of things, uh, when you're starting up four new programs, it's really difficult to recruit a new class, new opportunities for women, you know, with, to have a sport, a sport opportunity. So to be able to find a Gina Paolillo who could play volleyball, play basketball, play softball at a high, what was then a high level for us really was a jewel. Uh, not only that, not only those three sports, but she also was a runner. Okay, every day she ran before coming to practice, whether that's practice for volleyball, practice for basketball, or even softball. The Chargers fielded the first women's varsity teams in 1975 and 76 with volleyball, softball, basketball, and tennis the first to compete. Just four years later, the volleyball team broke into the national spotlight when it qualified for its first postseason appearance in the Eastern Association of Intercollegiate Athletics for Women Tournament. In 1983, the volleyball team qualified for its first of 30 NCAA tournament appearances, advancing to the Elite Eight. The next year, Geraldine Mature was named the first women's All-American in school history after leading the team with 300 kills. Shortly after celebrating a decade of women's basketball at New Haven, the Chargers stormed onto the national stage when they knocked off two-time reigning national champion Cal Poly Pomona for the first and only national championship in school history. Celebration. It's all over! There it is! New Haven! The national champions of Division Two. Go get the gold trophy, Jan Russman. Looking up and seeing all of the fans uh, that came out to support us, um, and just being able to share that uh, with George Eater, um, that we accomplished what we uh, said that we wanted to do as coming in um, new to your age. Um, and I can just remember uh, when the budget went off and we actually won, it was a great feeling to know that you know we set out a goal and that we had actually um, met that goal. And it was great to share that um, and do that for the seniors, uh, Terry and Bell and uh, Sonia that were leaving um, their last year. It was great just to um, be able to capture a championship um, for those seniors that time. After being named the most outstanding player of the national championship, Joy Jeter, who would become the all-time leading scorer in school history, was named the program's first All-American. The mid-1990s would be a prosperous time for the Chargers, beginning with the addition of women's soccer and women's track and field. In 1995, the softball program made its debut on the national stage with back-to-back -back appearances in the NCAA tournament. Volleyball would also enjoy success in the mid-90s, with a stretch of five seasons and six of seven years advancing to the Elite Eight of the National Championship Tournament. Among the leaders in the span was two-time All-American and New England Collegiate Conference Player of the Year, Jane Grant Griffith. Playing the sport under two amazing coaches, Coach Jane and Coach Salters, you know, has taught me a lot. It taught me leadership, like a good work ethics, and most importantly, it taught me teamwork. The beginning of the new century would mean the addition of more women's programs at New Haven, with women's lacrosse joining for the first season of varsity play in 2001. Of all the newly added programs, women's soccer would be the first to find the national limelight when it made back-to-back -back NCAA appearances in 2005 and 2006. Leading the way in that span was an eventual all-time leading scorer, Crystal Lindsay McCauley, a 2006 All-American and two-time Conference Player of the Year. 
competing at this level afforded me with the opportunity to be disciplined, confident, and a leader. My advice to any female athlete competing at the collegiate level is to make the most out of each day, stay focused, but enjoy every minute of it because it will be one of the most memorable times of your life. The women's lacrosse team would be the next to break onto the national scene after winning its first Northeast 10 conference title and advancing to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 2009. Leading the way during that run was All-American and all-time leading scorer, Bridget Brady. Playing sports at UNH did a lot for me as, as a person, as an individual. It really taught me the importance of a team, of a family, of a unit. The coaching staff across all teams were so supportive of, of each of the teams. I had some really great mentors and role models uh, in Coach Fallon and our administration. And I just think having that, that team unit and that family was uh, a huge part of sports at New Haven. The following year, softball returned to the spotlight, advancing to the program's first ever NCAA Super Regional. In 2011, track and field provided the most successful individual on the national stage when Shannon Gagne Arena won five NCAA national titles during the indoor and outdoor seasons. Running for UNH was the highlight of my college career. It taught me so many valuable lessons that can be applied in all aspects of life. After aspiring and succeeding in winning my national titles, I knew the value of goal setting and relentless determination. Once I became the team captain and led my team to a fourth place national finish, I understood the value of exhibiting mentorship and how to achieve excellence with others. Once I graduated summa cum laude, I knew how to balance sport and academic success. These life skills will always remain with me, and I am thankful for the opportunity UNH Athletics gave me to develop in this manner. In 1975, we started with nothing. And in 2016, 